a 99 pod contributor who's ready to contribute to the lovely topics that we have right now. Dino, what's going on, my guy? What's up, my guy? Real Leo. Happy to be here on this lovely, lovely evening. We're going to talk some boxing, deliver some great content for you guys, and we're going to give you guys a good show. We got some hot takes coming in and some uh, some good battles on the way, so we're looking forward to it. Absolutely, man. And I just want to start off with this topic that we have right now because, you know, we are fresh off of that big mega fight that we saw on Saturday. And before we proceed to this topic, Dino, I know you wasn't here yesterday when we did our recap of the fight. Feel free to do just that before you get into the question. But Eddie Hearn today came out with a very, very interesting take. A lot of people may agree. Some people may disagree. He said that the David Benavidez fight for Canelo is an easier fight for Canelo than the Bivol fight. Now, Dino, do you agree with Eddie Hearn's statement? I do agree with Eddie Hearn's statement, and I'm going to get into my recap of the fight while I deliver this take. I personally believe that Dimitri Bivol gave Canelo one of the best fights he's ever faced in his career. Dimitri Bivol utilized his jab very well and kept Canelo at a good range and was able to advance on him because Canelo was not utilizing his jab to keep his distance from Bivol, and he was not sticking and moving. He was virtually a punching bag, and it was one of the most – one of the most poor performances I've seen Canelo fight in a long time, probably since Triple G won. And I believe that at that weight class, at light heavyweight, Canelo does have a win there, beating Kovalev. But Kovalev was old. Kovalev was on the way out. So, yes, he does have a win, and he's able to compete at that level. However, against a young gun like Bivol, who's very good, world champion, and hungry, it makes for a more interesting fight, especially since light heavyweight is not Canelo's natural weight class. He, he's going up to fight at that weight. He wants to challenge. So I respect that. So I do believe that the Bivol fight is a better fight than Benavidez versus Canelo because after what we saw Saturday night, we saw Benavidez fight Caleb Plant, the toughest test of his career. The lights were shining on him. Lights were bright. I would say it was about probably about 4-4 going into like the eighth, and then Benavidez turned it up late in the fight. I did not expect him to turn it up like that, but Caleb Plant's uh, strategy of sticking and moving, good strategy, but it's very hard to keep up for 12 rounds, especially for – 36 minutes, that's a long time to keep that up. So when ben, when Benavidez started landing his punches and giving Caleb Plant some damage, that's what ultimately, ultimately led to Caleb Plant losing the fight. He was taking a lot of damage. He was absorbing too much. And it's sticking and move. He wasn't able to do it late in the fight anymore. I personally believe that Dave Benavidez fought a good fight. He showed up. That was the big question. Is he going to show up under the bright lights? Yes, he did. Hats off to him. Great fight. You know, it takes a lot of guts to get in the ring, but no matter who you're going up against. But I do not. I was not that impressed by David Benavidez like the media was. I think that he he fought good, but when I saw the like the whole outcome of the fight, all twelve rounds, I was like, it just didn't wow me enough to be like, okay, he's got to fight Canelo right now. Whereas right now, I'm looking like, you know what, Canelo's got a fight with Ryder coming up, month and a half. Go fight Bivol in the fall. We gotta give the, the Benavidez needs a little uh, about another fight or two. To really wow us, then we could say, okay, you got the Canelo fight right now. Right now, Canelo's got to go handle business with Bivol after Ryder. Because you know, we can't we can't discredit Ryder, professional fighter. So Canelo gets through Ryder, goes go and fight Bivol, get your revenge, go get the dub. So you know what? If you get the win, maybe we get Bivol trilogy. Who knows how it's gonna go? But I think he's got to go out and get his revenge and give us a better fight. Even if he loses, give us a better fight than what you gave us the first fight against Bivol because the first fight against Bivol was not impressive whatsoever on Canelo's part. So he does that. Then I think uh, afterwards we can talk about Benavidez fighting Canelo, but I really don't want to see Benavidez fight Canelo until probably about 2024, the earliest. I mean, look, we have to realize that my guy Dino is a Canelo Alvarez fan, and I'm a David Benavidez fan. OK, and I think when I put the bias aside and I tried to attack this question, right, respectfully, I think Canelo Alvarez has a high chance of losing to both fighters. OK, if you really want me to be technical. So I'm not sure if I can say and answer the question properly because they're going to present challenges either way for Canelo to overcome me personally. That's just how I view it. And what did Caleb Plant do to earn the Canelo fight? You know, that David Benavides didn't do. Like, I don't understand that. I don't think Caleb Plant has fought anybody before. He fought um 
Canelo, maybe Uzcatech or something like that a long time ago. Um, I was saying to myself, what did Caleb Plant do to earn that fight with Canelo? And now you talk about David Benavidez. He's more explosive than Caleb Plant. So when you're talking about that wow popcorn sitting in your seat, Caleb Plant doesn't have that. It's just stick and move. So I'm not sure what Caleb Plant did to Gardner that Canelo fight that David Benavides, who just beat Caleb Plant, didn't do and destroyed Caleb Plant. He actually destroyed him. I don't really think it's a it's a good thing for people to come on and say, you know, um, it was a close fight. Like I'm watching a lot of podcasts, you know. I'm watching a lot of podcasts, you know. I got my friends, you know, just like you. You my you my boy. I got my other boy Kenny. Salute to my guy Kenny. And it's like everybody making it seem like that fight was close. It was a second half shutout. Yeah, Look at the three I judges. Agree. All three judges had Benavidez winning every single round from the sixth round. It was complete domination in the second half. And I think when you talk about the comparison, because a lot of fighters and a lot of people like to compare the fights that, you know, guys had amongst each other. So when you reflect back to the Canelo and Plant fight, you can argue that Plant um, got done more harm by David Benavides. Like, he took more punishment by David Benavides. I understand that he got stopped by Canelo, but he was looking pretty good before he got stopped by Canelo. And the numbers actually back up my statement. Benavides landed more punches against Plant than Canelo did. He landed 38% to Canelo's 32%. He also got hit less than Canelo, 15% to, you know, um, Caleb Plant landing 22% of his punches on Canelo. So, look, before I send the rock back to you, if Benavides and Canelo fights, Benavides is more dangerous because he's going to try to inflict punishment. He's a guy that he walks you down. Um, obviously, these two fighters are going to fight in the center of the ring because Canelo is a guy that likes to walk you down as well. So the power, the volume punching is going to be there. He can inflict punishment on Canelo. Canelo could inflict punishment on him. So Canelo has a better probability of getting knocked out, whereas Bivol, who I thought could have knocked out Canelo, was content to go to a decision. So if you talk about less risk, Bivol, you know, does not have that killer instinct. Who has he knocked out? Nobody, right? So who has he stopped? Not a lot of people. Benavides is known for stopping people. And unfortunately, if referee Kenny Bayless wasn't out here trying to protect Caleb Plant, calling a timeout that wasn't asked for, he would have got done earlier. This fight would have been past six rounds. And I'll pass the mic to you. You know, I, I do agree with you. I, the whole stepping in, the whole timeout thing was very strange. When I was watching it, I was like, what, what is this timeout stuff? Like, this isn't NBA. We're not calling the, yeah. We don't get timeouts like that. Timeout. You know, yeah, unless it's something like, you know, really crazy. But yeah, I thought it was halftime. I'm like, boxing got a halftime in here? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I don't know what was up with all that. But anyways, my um, counter to that was if Benavidez really was on point, which, you know, he like the strike – numbers at the end i was like holy smokes because like you said it was it was a second half shutout people saying it was like this close like it really wasn't that close you know like i gave benavidez like a couple early rounds because i was like okay like plant was doing good in the beginning but then like six on it was just like that's complete like just mop the floor you know i think 117 111 was a good was a good score i think that's fair but getting into it if benavidez was really box office and he was really like this is the guy i personally felt that even without the stoppage he would have been able to get caleb plan out of there but he didn't do it so that comes to me to question like hmm yes it wasn't impressive it was a good win but was i that impressed no because he couldn't get him out of there canelo got caleb plan out of there and benavidez didn't get him out of there so it makes me think you know is benavidez really the box office fight we want to see or is Bivol, the box office fight we want to see because yeah he didn't get Canelo out of there but it was a boxing masterclass from Bivol in that first Canelo fight to where we were like holy smokes like he hasn't been done like this since like since like Mayweather so this was a very that was a very big deal for for Bivol to put on a boxing clinic against Canelo and Canelo Canelo had never been knocked out either or finished so you know he um he's known for staying on his feet and absorbing a lot of blows but for b to do that, it's like I, I feel like the b ball Canelo 2 is a bigger box office than Canelo Benavidez. I think if Canelo – I'll tell you this. If That's Canelo tough. beats 
Canelo beats Bivol at light heavyweight and then goes fights Benavidez next year, I think that makes for even bigger box office than him just going to fight Benavidez in the fall. What do you, what do you think about that? When you go back to Eddie Hearn's question or response and take about the danger and Benavidez being less dangerous, you know, um, than Bivol, I think if you're Canelo, fighting guys in your weight class makes more sense to me because here you have a guy in David Benavidez who just beat the guy that you beat before you fought Triple G. And like I said, it wasn't even close in the second half of the fight. Like, there were so many factors that went into why he didn't get the stoppage, as I alluded to before, the referee, and a non-conventional route that David Benavides took, which I'm going to talk about. And actually, it actually impressed me more. I'm going to get into all the little nuances. But I think, um, to answer the question, as it slipped in my mind, about, um, you know, um, losing or beating Bivol and fighting Benavides after, I just don't see him beating Bivol. And I don't see him fighting Benavides after he loses to Bivol. And if he does fight Benavides after he loses to Bivol, then he's going to be losing two straight fights. So I don't think he will take that route in fighting Benavides if he loses to Bivol because he's going to want another tuna fight, just like how he wants a tuna fight here with John Ryder. And I'm not going to disrespect John Ryder. He's a good fighter, but he's not going to beat Canelo Alvarez. I'll be shocked. So it's like, you call this a tuna fight. Why not fight Andre? <laughs> you know, if you want a tune-up fight, and I like Andre. A lot of people give him flack because he's not explosive. He doesn't eye pop, you know, the screen, and he's not box office. He's a southpaw that can box and move around, but he's undefeated. Why not fight a guy like that for your tune-up fight? If this is a tune-up fight, why not fight him? Why not fight Charlo, who is coming off a layoff? That's a tune-up fight. Why not fight him? So I think when you talk about Canelo and I go by his actions, clearly he feels that he can beat Bivol because he wants that fight. Eddie Hearn was like, listen, we got to go another route. We got to get you some W's before you fight him again. But anytime he was the mandatory for, or excuse me, other way around, Benavides was the mandatory to fight Canelo, there was no fight. What, is he ugly? You don't want to share the ring with him? Why? Because he presents a stylistic matchup that you're not trying to be on. You don't want to take that long-term punishment, even if you win, because sometimes you can win a fight and take more punishment. I'm going to talk about Tyson Fury real soon. We got that on the agenda. He took a lot of punishment in that Deontay Wilder fight, even though he won. So even though, you know, people will say, I right, Canelo could beat Benavidez, he will take a lot more punishment if he wins. If he wins that fight, then he will take against a Bivol. I understand Bivol is stronger because he's in a high weight class, but he boxes. He puts on a master class. There's no punishment in that. Benavidez, yeah. Both of these cats going to get punished. Hmm. That's very interesting here. I mean, I there was a while in the Bivol Canelo fight where I was like, okay, Bivol might get him out of here, but Canelo just, Canelo's a tough guy. He's got a good chin. So he's he's able to absorb those punches pretty well, and which is it was surprising considering how much damage he took in that b-ball fight. But I do have to say, going back earlier to what you said about Caleb Plant, you know what did he do to get that shot at Canelo? But that was all leading up to Canelo's conquest of super middleweight. He was like, okay, I'm gonna go up in super middleweight. I'm gonna conquer this division. You know, started with Colm Smith, then he had Billy Joe. Then he had Caleb Plant. So C Caleb Plant really, yeah, that he didn't really do one. anything. Like, <laughs> like, he didn't do crazy to like, up, earn you know? it. Like, he wasn't knocking Billy out Joe, lights out like, fighters, did... but it was part of his conquest super middleweight. And I do agree, like, he should defend the belt super middleweight. But I don't think he really, like, has to fight Benavidez right now. I think that's a fight you can make a little bit down the line because Benavidez, now he just has first big fight. And he won it, rightfully. You know, I don't think there should be any controversy around that. But he got his first big fight now. So I feel like, and that's the other thing too, is Canelo, it's his name. He's the, everyone wants to fight Canelo because they know they're going to get a payday. They're going to get rich after fighting Canelo. Everyone wants that payday. So in reality, he's the A side. He can pick and choose who he wants to fight. You know, Benavidez isn't the A side here. Like he, Canelo doesn't sit there and be like, oh, I got to take the Benavidez fight. Really, it's kind of like it's the other way the around. It's about the people though, Dino. Like, it's about what the people want to see. He gets that payday. It's about what the people want to see. School to payday. School 
I want to conquer everybody else's territory and not mine. It's about the people. One thing about me is I take consumerism very seriously. To be honest with you, with all due respect, Dino, this might get cut up and thrown out there and used to try to diminish me in the future. I don't care. I'm going to say what's on my mind. I don't care about the athlete. I don't mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. I'm about the consumerism, okay? Because I'm taking time out of my schedule. Everybody try to shun the consumerism. You hear Deontay Wilder, buy the pay-per-views. You going to buy my pay-per-view, Deontay Wilder? You seen them prices, and we came and get a good undercard. We came and get a good undercard. Don't get me wrong. The plan and benefit is undercard was, was good. But we came uh -huh. and get that on a consistent basis. So don't talk about my paycheck. Don't talk about me, you know, streaming fights. I like, come on, we see it with music. Streams and all that. We could get stuff for free. Okay? So I don't care about the athlete, to be honest with you. I don't care. They're making millions of money. You know, they don't care about us. they making a check. So to be real with you, I'm all about consumerism. The fans are craving the fight with David Benavidez and Canelo. We don't care about b -Vor. We already saw you against b -Vor. Okay? We already saw that. Okay? We want to see you against the Mexican monster. Okay? A guy that Mike Tyson gave that name to for a reason. Mike Tyson is decorated. He knows the sport. There's a reason why he called him the Mexican monster. There's a reason why his first big fight was last Saturday. Because nobody wanted to fight him. And that's why I respect Caleb Plant. Because he didn't have to take that fight. He didn't have to. I mean, technically, yeah, if he wanted to accomplish his goals. But if he wanted to be along with the Charlos just chasing the payday and all that, he didn't have to take this fight. But he did. And now I'm looking at Canelo. If everybody want to see this fight, then make it make it a fight. But no, I get this. I don't want to fight any Mexican fighters. You know, I know exactly why he said that. Don't get me started. I get started here. I know exactly why he said that. Because he don't want to fight the Mexican monster. He's too dangerous. He's young. He's in his prime. Canelo is about to leave his prime soon. Yeah. Okay. Matter of fact, Eddie Hearn, listen to me. If they wait out David Benavides, because the more he get into his prime, he's 26. If Canelo fights this fight when he's 28, 29, 30, oh, yeah, I'm definitely taking David Benavidez. So, yeah, maybe you can answer this question as of today. The b fight? Yeah, you can argue. We saw him against b so we know what we're working with. We didn't see him against um, Benavidez yet. So, cool. I'll give you that. But if you keep waiting this guy out, what if David Benavidez beats Andre in the process of Canelo chasing these other territory. No, I think that's a good right? fight to make right now in the fall. Why don't we but have Benavidez Andre, Andre and then yeah, why don't we have Benavidez Andre in the fall? We have Canelo B Vol 2 in the fall. And then if they both win their respective fights, I say Canelo uh uh Benavidez single to mile weekend 2024. But look, this is my point though, and this is why Eddie Hearn gotta be careful when he go yappity yap. And I you know Eddie Hearn is a good dude. I, I saw the dude, right? Um he think he's too cool to talk to me, but it's all good. Uh, you know, that's my point. If Benavides takes down Andre, takes down Charlo, now his confidence is at his peak and he's in his prime, the literal prime of his career. That fight is tougher at that point. Right now, you can argue, like I said, I still think it's a 50 50 fight. You can argue this will be the best time to fight a guy who's young and inexperienced, just had one big fight. You should jump on that right now because it would be like the Mayweather Canelo. Canelo was not in his prime. You pair Canelo, prime Canelo, and prime Mayweather. Low key, I'm taking prime Canelo. Don't get me wrong. Okay? But when they fought, Canelo wasn't in his prime. Mm -hmm. That's why he need to take the fight now with David Benavidez because if David Benavidez cleans up the division while Canelo is like, it's like a house, right? I consider 168 a house and Canelo left the house to go do what he do. And David Benavides is the babysitter and he's just making sure everybody's put to bed. Night, 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 Andre, you're tucked in. Night, night, Charlo, you're tucked in. Now, when Canelo comes back to this house and he thinks it's his house, David Benavides is going to be like, nah, nah, 168 is mine. I'm coming for that soul, Canelo. But I, I I disagree in the sense that he shouldn't take the fight early with uh, Benavidez, like too too early, like right now, because of we, how how often we criticize Mayweather for him his Canelo win. Yeah, it was a good great fight on Mayweather's part, 
But everyone always loves to say, and it's, it's very valid that Canelo wasn't in his prime. So maybe this is uh, helping my argument in the sense that we should let Benavidez get a couple more fights under his belt, a couple more big fights under his belt. I consider Andre Benavidez a good fight and a big fight. You know, lights would be on it, and I think that would it would sell a lot of pay-per-views. It's a good payday, and it's good stylistically as well. And I think that if you let ben, if Benavidez comes out of that, it's like, okay, that's a good fight, especially if he gets a finish. And I think that'll help his stake and also help Canelo's stake as well because it's like, okay, who did Benavidez beat up to the Canelo fight? Just Caleb Plant or did he beat Charlo? Did he beat Andrade and Caleb Plant? In a way, it's kind of like, okay, like now if I'm Canelo, it's like, all right, this looks good for my resume instead of me just picking on a younger fighter who just made it to the big stage. I like that reverse psychology there, Dino. That's why you're my boy because you know how to reverse the psychology here. All right, I'm going to try to reverse it back. Listen, I don't disagree with you because we talked about this on Monday. Who should Benavidez fight next? I said he should fight Andre. That was the guy that I picked. Because I, you know, not because I don't think he's ready for Canelo, mainly because I think Canelo is focused on John Ryder and Bivol. So that's why I said, you know what, fight Andre. Caleb Plant didn't have to take the fight. He gave you that opportunity. Give Andre another avoided fighter that opportunity to make a fight. Because if you don't give Andre that fight, he's not getting it. Canelo's not giving it to him. Charlo don't want to fight him. You have to be the one to give that fight to him. And it, obviously, you don't really benefit a lot from it. Andre benefits the most, but still, that's a good fight while Canelo is doing what he's doing. So I agree Heck there. Yeah. Heck yeah. But I would say this. Let's say Benavidez hypothetically destroys Andre and Charlo. Not that I think that's going to happen, but just hypothetical. We're playing a hypothetical game. And mm -hmm. his stock now is all the way here. And then Canelo once again, hypothetically, it's going to come off real crazy. Loses to John Ryder. Now, is that a fight we want to see anymore? Is that a fight we really want to see anymore? Hell no. I don't want to see that fight no more. I right, fine. Let's say he beats John Ryder. He's on down the road. And this time, in this b fight, it's not even closer than the first fight. It's actually b packs him up out of here. Do we still demand that Benavides fight? I say yes. I say yes. Absolutely. I I think that Canelo, I think he beats Ryder, and I think the B-Vol fight to me is I give the slight edge to B-Vol, but I still say it's a toss-up. I think if Canelo utilized his jab more in the first fight, it probably would have been different. And he just he didn't utilize his jab, and that was the biggest thing. It's like, how come he's not throwing his jab? So I look at that, and I'm like, okay, if Canelo fixes that makes a couple adjustments, he could beat B-Vol. So I don't think it's that far fetched for him to say like, to for people to be like, oh, Canelo, he'll just lose to Bivol. I think if he makes some adjustments, I think he could win. I don't, I don't think he'd knock him out, but I think he could win on points. And after that happens, I mean, you probably would have Bivol calling for a trilogy fight, rightfully so. And I think that even with a trilogy fight with Bivol, I still think if Canelo fights twice in 2024, I think he would get a Bivol trilogy. If he wins, and I think he can get Benavidez in the fall, then if that's the case, that's another Benavidez thing. in like October, September, October, or something like that, you know, because I think the time frame would add up. And then if Benavidez fights another time this year, if he fights in the fall or late summer or something, and then he could fight again in early 2024, so they both can get two fights under their belts before they face each other in a really big rematch. Because then it's like, all right, Benavidez got some more fights under his belt, Canelo did his business. That's it. Because right now, they're Eddie Hearn and, and Canelo, they are very focused on B-Vol, especially what the comments that came out today said. So I think we got to give it some time with the Benavidez fight, but I think it should be coming a little bit down the road. I wouldn't say too, too far for Canelo's sake. I agree with you on that, but I don't think it's that far away time-wise. I think probably about another year and a half. And that's what I'm saying, Dino. That's my last point. I got one more point about David Benavidez. The longer you wait to make that fight, the more punishment you take moving up in weight. Oh, that rhymes too. The more punishment you take moving up in weight. Yeah, and then coming back down, like the, the weight manipulation in that, when fighting David Benavides, who will be at his highest peak, that's very extremely dangerous. But look, I will say this about David Benavides. And one of the things that I liked, because on the show that we did yesterday, and I'm actually curious to get your response to that because you wasn't here. 
So I'm going to give my take, and it's going to be a take question at the end. So yesterday we debated, are we more impressed with David Benavidez and his win or Caleb Plant? And excuse me, are we more impressed with David Benavidez or disappointed in Caleb Plant? Look, I can't really say I'm impressed with David Benavidez because I expected it. So I can understand your side of the bracket. You picked Caleb Plant to win. I picked um, Benavides to win. So, of course, I'm going to end up on the bracket of being disappointed, whereas um, you're going to be on the bracket of being impressed with the guy that you picked to lose. And I get that. You know, David Benavides, this fight literally turned out the way how I expected it, excluding the knockout part of it. I actually thought it, it was going to be a stoppage. And, you know, one could argue if um, David Benavides wasn't fighting two people in the ring, then that stoppage would have came and i firmly believe that because um referee kenny bayless um should be paid less for what he did in that fight the fight turned out how i expected it outside of the knockout part of it which didn't happen because of you know i was gonna call him skip bayless anybody with a bayless is always messing something up but because of um kenny bayless right so when you reflect back to that fight and even though i said i was more disappointed in caleb plant i actually was sort of the more I watched film after the live fight, I was a little bit more impressed too at the same time with David Benavidez because like his patience, it was little nuances. It was the fact that he was struggling to close the distance and he did eventually and he kept his patience in that. A lot of people thought he was going to get frustrated. A lot of people were saying, you don't like this guy. Is he going to keep his composure? He kept his composure. And even if he seemed frustrated, he never got out of character. He literally tactician Caleb Plant. Like, when you think about it, most fighters, they attack the body. Why? Because it slows you down, and now it's headhunting season. Because now, you know, you don't got your high guard up. But he did it the opposite way. He went headhunting season, and when Caleb Plant had the high guard, that's when he attacked the body. And I thought that was smart because it wasn't a predictable game plan. And that's why I was a little bit more impressed because he did it the opposite route. Normally, you, you attack the body, then you attack the head. You, you know, you stop him at like that. But he attacked the head, and then when the high guard was up, he started attacking the body. So I guess my question at the end is, were you more impressed with David Benavides, which it doesn't seem like you were, or you were more disappointed in Caleb Plant after Saturday's showdown? The reason why I'll say I was more disappointed with Caleb Plant is because I believe he was like up or it was very close. I'd say it was about 4-4 going into the eighth round, ninth round. And I think he was winning very early in the fight. So I was I was more disappointed in Plant because I thought he would keep the momentum up and I thought he would keep the pressure up. But after in the later rounds, when Benavides was attacking his body more, giving him more damage, it just seemed like to me that Plant was having a little bit of problems adjusting and he was absorbing a lot. So his, his game plan kind of faltered a bit and it was a little tough to see. Um, I was rooting for plant. Um, and I just think that it was more disappointing to see him go out the way he did. I mean, he, tough warrior spirit, you know, he didn't get knocked out. He battled through the, all the, the blows and everything. And, you know, it's hard being in that ring, man, as um, it's tough, you know, hats are off to anyone who goes and does it because a lot of people don't even have the guts to go do it. And, it was just tough to see him go out like that, though, you know, because I thought that maybe at least towards the end of the fight, he would snag a round or two, make it um, a little more favorable for his favor, where it's like, okay, yeah, you lost some rounds towards the end, but you fought and you made it close. You made it worthwhile. But a lot of those rounds really weren't even that close towards the end, you know? And it's funny because, and this is my last point before we move on to the next boxing topic we have, you know, one of the reasons why I was disappointed in Caleb Plant was because the way how this fight ended sort of was like how the Canelo fight ended, where I felt he was just trying to survive, you know, yeah. and he was content with that. Like he was holding the offensive output in the second half of this fight was non-existent. He was trying to survive. And I understand that point, Dino. There's a very valid point that you brought up about how most guys don't want to get in that ring. And he got in that ring. He took the fight. A lot of guys didn't want to take that fight. But to be fair, you ask a random individual who is not making good loot and is broke to say, yo, I'll give you 50 million to do 12 rounds with David Benavides. I'm actually taking that joint. You know, I'll run. You know what I'm saying? I'll run and try to survive like what Caleb Plant did. 
You know what I'm saying? My offensive output going to be zero, right? I'm going to be trying to survive, but for that 35 million, hell yeah. What? Easy. I got to get knocked out? Listen, I take my chances in the IR, okay? I Listen, that, that money going to my family. So at the end of the day, I just thought I was disappointed that he didn't go for the gusto, you know, in the second fight um, because he didn't do so in Canelo. And you're not going to get fights like this. Like, you're not guaranteed that. So leave it all out there. If you get knocked out, cool, you live with that. But just don't be content with going to the scorecards. Like, nah, caution in the win. Try to go win. And I didn't think he did that. And that's why David Benavidez is the guy that came out victorious. Please like and subscribe for all the up-to-date content. We're, we, we've been slinging shows left and right, slinging content left and right. Please don't miss anything. If you do, like, subscribe, leave a comment, or leave a question, something you may want to answer, something you may have. It's, all ideas are great ideas. Nothing's a dumb question.